indigestion, fatigue, low libido, not sleeping well, need to lose weight. Just some of the topics you'll hear about. Hi, I'm Dr. Bob Martin. Join me Sunday mornings at 10 on Talk 1470. WNN. If you suffer from excruciating back pain, do not have surgery. Call Dr. Fernando Ranella, MD, and ask him about the new ozone therapy and how it can eliminate your back pain once and for all. End your suffering today. Call Dr. Fernando Ranella, the Center for Back Pain Management, 561-819-6325. That's 561-819-6325 or injectpainaway.com. Talk here, talk there. Talk 1470 AM and 95.3 FM, the Health and Wealth Radio Network. WNN. Getting older is not for sissies. That's what one of my patients says. And it's funny, but it's true. Live long enough and you'll get arthritis, skin cancer, probably one of the common chronic diseases like CHF, COPD, diabetes. At All County Healthcare, we teach you how to manage your disease. We make sure you know how to take your medications and how to recognize signs and symptoms before requiring hospitalization, no matter how many visits it takes. You didn't move to Florida to be sick. You moved here to enjoy the rest of your life. And that's exactly what our team of nurses, therapists, and aides at All County Healthcare help you do. All County Healthcare, Inc. is locally owned and operated, serving the Tri-County area, Palm Beach, Dade, and Broward Counties for the last 25 years. The practice of medicine is changing dramatically. All County Healthcare, Inc. still does it the old-fashioned way where our nurses and healthcare professionals come into your home to service your medical needs, providing you the fastest and best care possible. For more information, call 954-717-7027. And remember, Medicare Home Care is covered by Part A of Medicare with no out-of-pocket cost to you. It's your decision and only your decision on what health care agency you use. Call today, All County Home Health Care, Inc. at 954-717-7027. License 2009096. The opinions expressed on the following sponsored program are strictly those of the host, guests, and callers, and not necessarily those of this station, its staff, management, or sponsors. Amp2.tv presents You and Your Doctor, teaching you to live a longer and healthier life. Proudly sponsored by All County Healthcare, where people are the heart of our business. All County Healthcare is a Medicare certified agency where one call will service all your home care health needs. For more information, call 954 717 7027 or visit our website, allcountyhealthcare.com. Now, let's get informed to living a longer and healthier life. Here is your host for today's show. Hello, South Florida and beyond, and welcome to the You and Your Doctor show, living a longer and healthier life here um, on a Tuesday, January 9th. So really proud to bring you today another action-packed program. We're going to talk a lot about the cardiologists in Palm Beach County. Um, Huge uh, shout-out to the sponsor of this show, All County Healthcare Incorporated. Um, they are a Medicare certified home health care agency. And if you ever have any questions on Medicare or home health, you can always call them um, and ask for Maddie at 1 888 717 7170. And she can answer all your questions. We'll talk a little bit about all county health care um, later in the show as well. We're also live streaming on their Facebook page. So that's All County um, Healthcare. And I actually shared it to my Facebook page. And you can also get any of the former, um, the previous, I should say, the previous shows on their website as well at allcountyhealthcare.com. So the shows live on the website, allcountyhealthcare.com, and um, also on the Facebook page. So. We're on AM radio, 1470 AM. We're on 95.3 FM. We're on Facebook Live. We're on the website. I mean, you should be able to find out any of the shows. Um, as you know, we um, uh, cover cardiology, 
orthopedics, primary care, neurology on the program, uh, endocrinology. We had an endocrinologist on. And if you have, ever have any questions, it's one 565 1470 And um, you can ask your questions on the air. So tonight we're going to talk about cardiologists, cardiac surgeons, cardiac electrophysiologists in Palm Beach County, um, structural heart disease cardiologists. We're going to we're going to cover cardiology in Palm Beach County. And joining me tonight on the show is Rob Summer. He's a physician development manager for the cardiology program in Palm Beach County for Tenant Florida Physician Services. Rob, welcome to the program. How are you doing tonight? David, I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on tonight. Very excited. Yeah, definitely. And we've, we've wanted to have you on uh, for a long time, as have some viewers have asked for you. We got actual requests to have the aka i know i'm going to give it out the robster on the air so really glad you could join us well thank you very much and there's no proof that i made that nickname up i just no. want to, i'm going on the record <laughs> that's good to know um so what is a physician development manager that is me that's what i do so basically what i do is i work with all of the cardiologists that are employed by tenant in palm beach county uh we have other service lines as well we have not just cardiovascular, but we have uh, neurological, we have uh, orthopedic, um, so you name it, some of the bigger service lines. We have primary care physicians. So my job is essentially helping these physicians navigate um, through the community. So I introduce them to other physicians that might be interested to hear what they do. Uh, I get them speaking engagements so i help facilitate them getting out to the community so a number of the physicians that i work with will give community talks um i think one of the most important things that i help do is i help educate the community on the procedures and and um the uh, diseases that uh, our physicians treat uh, i think people out there uh, one of the most important things to remember I, i'm going to talk about a number of things tonight obviously i am not a physician i'm not a clinical person by nature so keep that in mind there's some things that i'm going to know and some things that i probably won't but the most important thing i think for people that are listening is for you to realize that knowledge is power and the more that you know about yourself and you know any disease or any issue that you have going on the better you're going to do. So I think that that's one of the takeaways tonight. One of the other takeaways tonight is the uh, relationship that you have with your physicians. Um, and that is critical to your care. And I think that, I think too much. No, that's I say always that, good. I say that a lot. I say <laughs> I think a lot. But um, but I do, I, I, really, I really love this job. Uh, I know a lot of people say that, um, but I've, I get a lot back when I when I take uh, one of our physicians out and they do a community based talk and there are people that are afflicted by maybe something like venous insufficiency. So Dr. Ricotta is our vascular um, surgeon. He's our director of vascular and endovascular therapies for all of South Florida, um, actually for the whole East Coast of Tenet um, for all the way up through Boston. So. When he's doing a community-based talk and people are lined up afterwards to come listen to him and ask him specific questions and you know he's able to address these needs or we have a physician who um, like um, Dr. Sanon mm -hmm. in, in up in Palm Beach Gardens. Who's actually been on this program, been on the so program. has Dr. Ricotta. They've both been on this program. I think Dr. Ricotta's been on twice. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so, but, but you think about it, um, I think that, you know, one of the things that a number of the physicians that I work with treat is mitral valve regurgitation. So what, what is that? You know, when you, when you talk about the body and we talk about biology, um, the blood is supposed to flow one way. You know, so the arteries take the blood away from the heart and the veins bring the blood back to the heart. Well, when you're talking about the heart, the mitral valve becomes stenotic. It just doesn't work like it should. And then you get backflow. So instead of the blood going through and the valve working the way it should, it doesn't, and blood is allowed to flow backwards into the heart. And that can cause symptoms such as heart failure. So the patients can't walk as far as they used to, and they, um, you know, the heart just has to work so much harder to get the same amount of blood out. Over time, it can actually lead to heart failure. So one of the things that I'm very proud of, when I go out to a cardiology office 
or I talk to people in the community, um, mitral regurgitation is actually prevalent. And there's a number of ways of treating that. So Dr. Sanon uh, or Dr. Bridge Manny, Dr. Sanon is in Palm Beach Gardens, Dr. Bridge Manny is in Delray Beach. They do a procedure called the mitral clip which is a minimally invasive procedure where they go in through the femoral artery or they go in through the radial artery in your arm. And what they do is they treat that uh, mitral valve by repairing it. They use a clip and it's a minimally invasive procedure. Interventionally, right? This right. is um, no, it's a very, not, not a, a cut. This is actually uh, entered right. through the vein. Transcatheter. Yes. Transcatheter. Minimally invasive procedure. Wow. And they fix it. They repair it that way. Well, Dr. Nishant Patel, who is a cardiothoracic surgeon in Palm Beach Gardens, and Dr. Uh, Brian Bethay, cardiothoracic surgeon in Delray, and Dr. Eric Beyer, and Dr. Neil Galindez. I'm, go I'm going through the, all of them, but... Yeah, you have 17. I looked it up today. You you represent 17 heart doctors in Palm Beach County. That's just amazing. And, they're, and, and, and they all are phenomenally trained with great experience, and they all offer different things. And so, but the, the point I'm trying to make with mitral regurgitation, mitral valve regurgitation, is that it can be treated from a minimally invasive procedure. It can be repaired that way. It can rep be repaired surgically, and it can be replaced surgically. And at Delray Medical Center, it, the entire valve can be replaced minimally invasive because if there's, there's a, um, a trial that's going on. So you think about it, one of the things I'm very excited about, and you know me, I'm very hyperactive, it doesn't take a lot to get me excited. Except when we put you in the green room, which we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about that. Yeah, I got. I need to get some green, some some green light glasses that'll help yeah. me relax. So, but the, one of the things that I'm very excited about is that Tenet South Florida has done a phenomenal job at recruiting physicians, bringing physicians on board that make a huge difference. So, a lot of the procedures that we do, it used to be that patients would have to go to a teaching hospital. You know, uh, University of Florida, University of Miami, you'd have to travel to go there. You might be there for a, you know extended period of time. Tenant South Florida is offering procedures right here in Palm Beach County that you can have done that are that are some of these procedures are miraculous. The differences that they can make in patients' lives is is just it's huge and it's wonderful to be a part of that. That's great to hear, and, and great job explaining that, Rob. Um, and like you said, um, you are there to introduce um, doctors um, from the Tenant Florida Heart and Vascular Network um, to the community, and that is so important. I know we're gonna we're gonna talk a little bit in a minute about um, some upcoming events, a symposium, two symposiums, um, a lecture as well but um i just wanted to um kind of tell you again we're here with rob summer um he's a physician development manager for tenant florida physician services he represents the cardiology line in palm beach county um like i said before 17 heart doctors that's 11 cardiologists four cardiac surgeons and two cardiac electrophysiologists so that's just amazing and we were actually going to have one of uh, the heart surgeons on the program tonight, like you said, a uh, cardiothoracic surgeon in Palm Beach Gardens, Dr. Nishant Patel of Tenant Florida Cardiovascular Care. Uh, Dr. Patel is busy, though. He's doing maybe three to four uh, TAVR surgeries um, today. So let's let's talk a little bit about the TAVR. I, I've um, had a f uh, the doctors on the program, a few that you mentioned, mm -hmm. um, that do the TAVR. I know there's a, a, a lot of them that, that do it. Um, Dr. Patel, as we mentioned, does it. Um, Dr. Byer, I believe. Dr. Galindez, who we're going to talk a little bit about later on. Um, Dr. Sanon, like you said. Yes, Dr. So, Manny. Dr. Manny as well. Okay, so it's a transcatheter aortic valve replacement surgery and it's done by both the cardiac surgeons who are known for um, doing open surgery traditionally and the interventional cardiologists like you said who enter the um, body interventionally through a vein or artery right so the the TAVR is more of a procedure mm -hmm. so it's not surgery it's um it's a minimally invasive procedure uh they can go in through the femoral artery in your leg or the radial artery in your arm and the bottom line is they're doing this because of the fact that the aortic valve is stenotic so mm -hmm. it's calcified and quite a lot like um i mentioned earlier with the um, mitral valve it's not working properly so 
the heart has to work overtime to pump the blood through. And, and so what they do is they will go in and they will replace the valve from a minimally invasive procedure, which is called TAVR, you know, transcatheter aortic valve replacement. The, the new valve is actually crimped up into this catheter. And they go in and they will deploy the valve and uh, it's, a, it's a phenomenal procedure. Um, depending on what is most appropriate for the patient, there's a number of different things. And so the great thing is the more options patients have, the better they will do. Mm-hmm. And so when you look at TAVR, the minimally invasive procedures when they first came about, um, the, the, the catheter sizes were, the fr- it's called French sizes, but the sizes of the catheters were much larger. And when they first started doing this, the physicians weren't as, obviously they didn't have as much experience. So the stroke rates were higher. And the reason why was because they, um, basically there was uh, calcification that was getting knocked off and you know would go and cause a stroke. Those stroke rates have come down significantly as the catheters sizes have gone down and as the experience of the physicians has gone up. So it used to be that you only were going to get a TAVR if you were too sick to have open heart, uh, you know. And so someone's very sick, and you know the phys- the surgeon is like, "There's no way we can do this procedure. The patient is just not healthy enough." So they would get a TAVR. So what's happened is, as these procedures have come about, what is so funny? David's I'm laughing not la- at me. I'm Am not, I talking too no, much? No, no, no. I'm not laughing at the procedure. I'm, no, I'm, I know you're I'm not laughing at the procedure. We had laughing a, at me. a Facebook Live question from Steve Corson. Yes. Can they go through my ear? And that's <laughs> <laughs> that's what I was laughing at. Uh, no, Steve, it has to be through, uh, like Rob said, the femoral artery or um, artery, radio, artery, radio yeah, artery yeah. in the arm. But thanks for asking. Yeah, that's great. And I love thank that. you for uh, the compliment on humor. my tie, too. He said, nice tie, dude. So, Rob, hold that thought. Yep. We're actually going to take a quick break and on the other side talk a little bit more about TAVR and the cabbage procedure and all the other um, heart treatments your doctors do on the You and Your Doctor show. All County Healthcare, Inc. is locally owned and operated, serving the Tri-County area, Palm Beach, Dade, and Broward Counties for the last 25 years. The practice of medicine is changing dramatically. All County Healthcare, Inc. still does it the old-fashioned way where our nurses and healthcare professionals come into your home to service your medical needs, providing you the fastest and best care possible. For more information, call 954-717-7027. And remember, Medicare Home Care is covered by Part A of Medicare with no out-of-pocket cost to you. It's your decision and only your decision on what health care agency you use. Call today, All County Home Health Care, Inc. at 954-717-7027. License 200-99096. Hi, I'm Deanna Barron, RN, with All County Health Care. You know how I know that I've done a good job? We say goodbye. After you understand the medications you take, Once you know that gaining two pounds in a day means you should call the doctor, when your wound is healed, when you can use your nebulizer all by yourself, when the goals that you and your all-county healthcare team of nurses, therapists, and aides established are met, we say goodbye. Very nice to meet you, and I hope I never see you again. And I mean that in the nicest way possible. You are listening to You and Your Doctor, Living Longer and Healthier, an informative show that helps you find answers to questions you always wanted to ask but did not have that somebody that could make a difference in your life. Call into the show if you have a question at 888-565-1470 and we will put you on the air to inform all our listeners. Now, back to our show. And we're back with Rob Summer, Physician Development Manager um, for Cardiology in Palm Beach County for Tenant Florida Physician Services. Um, we talked about the 17 heart doctors he represents. You can find all of them at tfpsheart.com. So just type that into your browser. Rob, before the break, I was asking you a little bit of, uh, more about TAVR. But was this a, um, a surgery that um, I keep on saying surgery? I know it's a procedure. Yes. But was uh, was this um, aortic valve replacement 
originally done as an open surgery years ago before this well, the, the procedure? Gold the gold standard is still open heart surgery because oh, okay. all the data... Now, the data has become a lot closer. So, um, basically, the gold standard is open heart surgery. And the TAVR came about... And initially it was for patients, like I said, that were too sick to have open heart surgery. But the the companies are incredible at developing these these um, these devices. And so as the devices have gotten better and it's gotten safer, um, what's happening is it used to be only the sickest of the sick got TAVR. Now they have done this the studies and the trials and they have the data. So the thing is that the the replacement, open heart replacement, they're replacing that valve. The, the, the long-standing, um, the outcomes data on that is phenomenal. They have great um, data on the, the length that that valve will last. And TAVR, they're, they're doing those trials now to find out how long those valves will last. Um, one of the things that the physicians have told me, though, if someone has a TAVR, to go in and do another TAVR years down the road, you can do a valve and valve. So basically, they'll, they would put a new valve inside the old valve. And mm -hmm. it's an absolutely incredible. But... Because of technology and because these companies are constantly putting money back into their company and evolving these um, devices, now TAVR is for moderate risk patients as well. And that's because they've spent the money and they've done the trials and the FDA has cleared them to do some of these patients. In fact, right now at Delray Medical Center, they have a low risk TAVR trial where this is basically a trial that's going to, to hopefully show that someone getting a TAVR will have the exact same outcomes. And there have been trials that have shown this, but this is actually a head-to-head -head trial where they're hoping that uh, the patient that's going to, it's a 50-50 randomized trial. So half the patients would get open heart surgery. The other half of the patients would get TAVR. Mm -hmm. And what they'll do is at the end of the trial, obviously, it, it, you know, it's blinded, but to a certain extent, they'll be able to go back and they'll be able to look at this and see, does TAVR do just as well or better than the gold standard, which is which is open heart surgery. But every patient is different. And I think that's the great thing. What is most appropriate for that particular patient? So um, switching gears a little bit, um, mm -hmm. go ahead with your next I question. I'm sorry, because you know you, me, I, I, I get going. Well, that's fine. We appreciate the info. Um, the low risk TAVR um, trial, is yes. that is Dr. Bridge Manning? Dr. Bridge Manning and, and Dr. Brian Bethay at Delray okay. Medical Center, yes. Okay, um, tell us, um, Dr. Brian Bethay is a cardiac surgeon, and mm -hmm. a little bit about what he specializes in, because I know you talked a little bit about Dr. Manning before. So basically, what what a lot of these trial, what a lot of these uh, procedures need is they have to have open heart backup, mm -hmm. and so, um, so Dr. Manny does the procedure with Dr. Bethay, and he is there. Um, and it, every every team is different. So you have some physicians, some of the surgeons are more involved in some cases than others. I think the most important thing that people need to realize is that the more knowledgeable patients are about what is available in the area, I think that you know. When you learn about whatever the issue is and you look and you say, okay, look, I have options and I'm going to rely on these physicians. So these physicians like Dr. Manny and Dr. Bethay work together uh, up in Palm Beach Gardens, Dr. Patel and Dr. Sandin work together. So, so that's Palm Beach Gardens Medical Center? Right. So, so at Palm Beach Gardens Medical Center, let's just say someone refers a patient to Dr. Sandin. And let's say it's um, it's for potential mitral you know mitral regurgitation. Well, that patient may not be appropriate for the mitral clip, which is the repair. Mm -hmm. So what they would do then, if they're not appropriate, they would bring the surgeon in. And the surgeon looks at what is available, what is going to be in that ba patient's best interest. So um, Dr. Joseph Ricotta, vascular surgeon, um, does a lot of minimally invasive robotic procedures, and so. Uh, I've seen a number of his presentations, and in one of those presentations, um, you know, imaging is really coming on strong. So the better imaging allows the physicians to know what they're dealing with and what is going to be best for the patient. So um, carotid surgery, you know, basically the, the carotids become blocked. The carotid artery in the yes, neck. exactly. So Dr. Ricotta can either surgically, with a scalpel, do a surgical procedure, or he can go in a minimally invasive way and do the procedure. And there's a number of things that would, um, different comorbidities or different issues that the patient is experiencing that would lead him to do the procedure a certain way. So the sicker the patient, 
the less likely he would be to do it surgically. However, one of the patients had a huge calcium deposit at the bottom of the carotid artery. And there's no way that he could have taken that catheter up through the carotid without putting the patient at serious risk for breaking off a piece of that calcium and potentially causing a stroke. So he did it from a surgical perspective. But the great thing is he does both. So that allows him and the patient to determine what is in their best interest. So he can either do it from a surgical perspective or what they call um, endovascular or from within. So mm -hmm. minimally invasive procedure. And that, that to me, I think is huge. Like as, as these patients realize that they have options before they get too sick. Sometimes they get so sick and they, the, the sicker you get, the less options you have. Uh -huh. And I've heard Dr. Ricotta say that in, in, in lectures and in, in person, um, you know, he's trained as a surgeon first, general surgeon mm -hmm. first, so he can take out his scalpel and um, if there's any need for um, a high risk, um, take out a scalpel and, and do the, um, the traditional type of surgery. So he's trained both ways. Let's stay on the topic of Dr. Ricotta for a minute. Um, he's in the news because... Um, Delray Beach just had uh, Delray Medical Center just had the grand opening of their um, hybrid operating room, and um, we were actually both there. We were lucky yes. enough to get in there. Thank you for getting me in there because I think you're the reason I got in there. <laughs> and we were talking a little bit more uh, uh, before about the green room. Yeah, and um, you can check this out on Delray Medical Center's Facebook page. It, it's worth seeing the pictures. So. He, um, in, in this hybrid OR that he does this robotic surgery in, um, there's an option to turn the lights down to a, uh, a green light in the room. And I'll, I'll let you explain a little bit, but I know it's to, so he can see the displays better and he, him and his team can see the displays better, um, on the screens, all this, um, this imaging that they have, you, you mentioned it before and, yeah. and you were in there and I'll, I'll just say this to listeners. I'll let you talk a little bit about it. Um, Dr. Ricotta, think of this, uh, uh, it's a huge uh, hybrid operating room, and, and there's a, a, a console on one side, and in the middle is um, the robot, and then there's all displays everywhere. And then there's a control room, which I imagine, um, you know, cardiac nurses are in and, and, and radiologists yep. and whatnot. And Dr. Ricotta sits at a console and is able to maneuver the robot that is doing surgery on the vascular case about 20 feet away from where he's in the console at. And um, tell us a little bit about what you saw in there. I mean, well, it was awesome. The great thing about the robot is that, first of all, there's only so many robots in the world, and I believe Dr. Ricotta's done more than everybody else combined. I think he said there's there were 10, now there's 15, I think he said, at the event. Yes. So in the whole world. Whole world. He had two in Atlanta when he was uh -huh. at Emory. Um, you know, and one of the great things, his training is absolutely impeccable. So he trained at Johns Hopkins, so did Dr. Bethay, so did Dr. Patel. Johns Hopkins is one of the best medical schools in the country, and if not the world. Um, he, Dr. Ricotta also trained at the Mayo Clinic in Minnesota, the Cleveland Clinic in Cleveland. He practiced medicine at the Mayo Clinic for six or seven years, then at Emory in Atlanta. Um, and so, but the thing is, when you, when you look at the robot, um, first of all, the great thing about the robot is it allows him to be able to kind of maneuver through very arduous territory. So a lot of times, and I'm sorry because I'm, I'm using my hand at them, but the carotid arteries go up and down and around. And to do that by hand takes a lot of time and a lot of effort. And unfortunately, um, the endovascular walls that you're maneuvering through can become damaged because of that. So the robot automatically stays in the middle of the vessel. So it always is in the middle of the vessel. And basically, these newer, this new robot that he's got, I believe, has GPS on it. So to a certain extent, he can use this GPS once they map out. He uses, he uses a software package called Terra Recon to map out every patient's um, biology, anatomy. And so that robot knows exactly where it's going to a certain extent. And so it allows him to do more difficult procedures um, from probably from a safer perspective because it does stay in the middle of the vessel and in a shorter period of time. And so that's better for everybody. And so I think, um, you know, when you look at the procedures he's able to do, uh, I mean, it's going to take too long to explain, but the bottom line is um, aortic aneurysm. Um, my grandmother passed away from an aortic aneurysm. Very difficult to treat. Um, you know, it's, but it's obviously treatable. 
And the bottom line is you can do it from an endovascular perspective, which is the minimally invasive procedure, or you can do it from a surgical perspective. And Dr. Ricotta has a letter from the FDA that allows him to do what they call a fenestrated branched graft, which is basically if the aneurysm is too close to the other an other arteries, like the mesenteric arteries and the renal arteries, if to, in order to take out or to keep the blood flow from going to that aneurysm, because an aneurysm is a bulge. It's, it's an area of the aorta that is weaker, and so it's bulging. And so it's it's dangerous, but it, obviously it's extremely dangerous if that was to rupture. So mm -hmm. the, the goal is to put a sleeve in that would actually take the blood flow away from that aneurysm or that bulge. The problem is, if, if it's right next to another artery, you can't block the blood flow from going to your kidneys. You can't block the blood flow from going to your liver and so or your intestines. And so the, 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 the issue that you run into is that he is able to do a procedure where he can actually take the graft out of the catheter after he's mapped out the patient's anatomy and burn holes where the other arteries come off. And then he's able to address that issue, um, you know, and it's not approved here in the United States, but he has a special letter from the FDA that allows him to do that. In Europe, they can do it, but they can't do it from an emergent perspective because all of those graphs have to be made by a company in Australia, and it takes a few months to get it. And so right here at Delray Medical Center, there's a procedure that can be done, and it's being it's part of a, a huge trial that the FDA is doing. I, mean, I don't know how huge the trial is, but it's a big trial because it's encompassing the whole nation. And Dr. Ricotta is one of the physicians that has that letter from from the FDA that allows them to do this very specialized case. And I apologize, people, because I probably totally butchered no, that explanation. But but it's, it's it's extremely important because if you think about it, um, you know, it's it's setting South Florida apart from some of the huge teaching hospitals. I mean, think about it. That case in and of itself, I think he's done two mm -hmm. cases since he's been here. Um, phenomenal case. And mm -hmm. when I learned about it, you know, it's absolutely incredible. Um, and so... But that's what I mean by the fact that, you know, here in South Florida, there's procedures and physicians here doing these procedures that can really set, they really set, it really sets, you know, South Florida and tenant apart. The future of medicine is now. It really is. Um, on We're going to take another quick commercial break. On the other side, I'm going to um, give everyone a fact about the hybrid OR that no one knows. You may know, but... I don't know. No one else knows. But I'm going to... Um, that's my tease on the other side on the You and Your Doctor show. All County Healthcare, Inc. is locally owned and operated, serving the Tri-County area, Palm Beach, Dade, and Broward Counties for the last 25 years. The practice of medicine is changing dramatically. All County Healthcare, Inc. still does it the old-fashioned way where our nurses and healthcare professionals come into your home to service your medical needs, providing you the fastest and best care possible. For more information, call 954-717-7027. And remember, Medicare Home Care is covered by Part A of Medicare with no out-of-pocket cost to you. It's your decision and only your decision on what health care agency you use. Call today, All County Home Health Care, Inc. at 954-717-7027. License 2009096. Hi, my name is Deanna Barron. I'm an RN with All County Health Care. I used to work for this huge corporate-owned home health agency, and I was always worried that they wouldn't let me make enough nursing visits to be sure that your wound was fully healed, or that you were completely comfortable checking your husband's blood sugar level and giving him the correct dose of insulin, or that your mom's lingering cough was the end of her bronchitis, not the beginning of a new episode. The owner of All County Healthcare always says, give the patient what they need, and he means it. At All County Healthcare, I see my patients until their goals are met, and I never worry. I hope you never need a nurse to come to your home. But if you do, tell your doctor, I want all-county health care. 
You are listening to You and Your Doctor, Living Longer and Healthier, an informative show that helps you find answers to questions you always wanted to ask but did not have that somebody that could make a difference in your life. Call into the show if you have a question at 888-565-1470, and we will put you on the air to inform all our listeners. Now, back to our show. And welcome back. We're here with Rob Summer, Physician Development Manager, Cardiology Line for Tenant Florida Physician Services in Palm Beach County. Right before the break, uh, Rob, what I was saying, the fact that, I know you know it, but I don't know if it's, it's public yet, but it was said the other day at the new endovascular hybrid OR suite grand opening at Delray Medical Center. So Dr. Ricotta has been here about 13 months or so. He's done yeah. 500 endovascular procedures at Delray Medical Center. Yes. So that's what the grand opening was about. So from this... Uh, that's the minimally invasive procedures. Minimally invasive, yes. yes. Not just, not just the regular surgeries. That's yeah. just the minimally invasive just robo- minimally robotic invasive. surgeries. Robotic. Yep. So he's going to be able to do... Uh, telemedicine cases. So the way I'm going to explain this quickly is, so you know, like I said, Dr. Ricotta is at a console and the patient is about 20 feet away and he's maneuvering the robot um, with his staff through the uh, patient's anatomy. So he'll be able to, in the near future, it's already uh, planned, say there's a case in hypothetically Chicago and they have that robot in the hospital. Dr. Ricotta will be able to do the robotic surgery from Delray Beach on a patient, hypothetically, in Chicago yep. or elsewhere. So the um, advancement yeah. uh, that we're, the, the way medicine is moving, cardio or vascular surgery is moving, and um, he, it's going to open a lot more treatments up for a lot more people who couldn't have that and type of treatment. If it's okay, I just want to mention one yeah, definitely. thing. A lot, of those, a lot of those 500 cases, um, he utilized that robot for procedures that we call PAD or peripheral arterial disease. You know, a lot of people that have diabetes are at higher risk um, for amputation. And so um, the robot can basically go down. There's two catheters and a wire, and the wire in that catheter can basically go into the toe. So basically, the reason why people would have to have their foot or toes or leg amputated would be lack of blood flow to the foot. And so that robot can really open up the blood flow in very tiny arteries that you can never do a bypass to. You know, people hear about bypasses, and the, the, the problem is those arteries are just too small. The robot can go down to a one millimeter size vessel. And so, um, you know, the, the amputation rate at Delray Medical Center is down just over 50%, and, it, it, you know, in just the year that he's been here. And so, to me, that is a, a you know, there's a saying, save a limb, save a life, because if someone has to have a foot or leg amputated in two years, half those patients have died. Their mortality rate is through the roof. And at five years, 80% of those patients have died. And so um, those are just some statistics, but they're very powerful statistics. And I think it's incredible. Um, you know, limb salvage is basically something that is getting a lot of attention Um A lot of the physicians that I work with, it's not just about saving lives, but it's also about improving your quality of life. And I think a lot of patients feel that way as well. You know, there's no sense in living another 20 years if you're miserable or, you know, know, and obviously the bottom line is that we all want to live as long as we possibly can. However, it's also about the quality of life that you have. And I think that some of these procedures can make a huge difference. Yeah, limb salvage, that is um, awesome that he's doing that because, um, like you said, um, there can be a higher mortality rate when um, someone loses a limb yes. to um, disease. Um, I want to talk a little bit about, you represent a f- uh, cardiac electrophysiologist, and there's a, another one in Palm Beach County in the Tenant Network as well that you used to represent, but um, cardiac electrophysiology um, will tell the um, listeners we've had Dr. David Wiseman on the program. He, uh, the way I explain it, he's an electrician of the heart. Yes. Am I right by saying that? You're exactly right. Uh, Tell us a little about Dr. Wiseman and and what he can do for atrial fibrillation or AFib for short. Sure. Um, We have two electrophysiologists in Palm Beach Gardens, uh, Dr. Um, David Wiseman and Dr. Matthew Klein. And basically what they do is they treat irregular heartbeats. And it is, it's from the electrical impulses that go through the heart. 
And atrial fibrillation is a very serious disease. Um, basically, people that have AFib are three to five times, I believe, more likely to have a stroke. And so it's very important that it's treated. There's, um, uh, there's ways that you can treat it with uh, pharma pharmacology, you know, with medicines. There's ways that you can treat it um, with shocking the heart. And then there's ways that you can treat it. Um, and also there's ways that, uh, you know, from a procedure, from an ablation, um, catheter-based ablation. But then there's also ways that you can treat the symptoms. And so, um, you know, atrial fibrillation, um, one of the things that was described to me by Dr. Galindez, who's, and I'll talk about one of the procedures that, that he helps do, um, basically permanent AFib. There's a lot of patients walking around that are on a number of different medications. Um, they can't be as active as they used to be because of the side effects of the medication. And, and there's also medications that they have to take for blood thinning. And so there's a lot of things that they can't do because of risk of excessive bleeding. And so, um, and a lot of patients need to take those medications. Um, you never want to stop taking medication without talking to your physician, but there are procedures that these guys can do that would alleviate or hopefully put the, um, put the heart back in a normal sinus rhythm is what, is what it's called. And so they can do that a number of different ways. And so I think, um, there's a couple different ways to do that. So uh, catheter-based ablation is when they go in through the femoral artery and they go into the heart. And basically what they do is there's there's a few parts of the heart that malfunction. And so uh, it's right around the pulmonary veins. So the, the pulmonary veins bring the blood back to the heart and, you know, the heart... The, the, Basically, the blood goes back and forth between the lungs and the heart. And I apologize. I'm I'm actually very right. hyperactive right now because I'm very excited. Well, but, we have to get so, green lights in here. Uh, you've got to get green lights for me. Yeah. So, um, but basically, what the what what the um, electrophysiologist does is the parts of that heart around, especially at the beginning around the pulmonary veins that are malfunctioning, they take a small catheter and they make little burn marks. And what they do is they stop that malfunctioning from happening. And the problem that you have is that with atrial fibrillation, the longer you have it, the more difficult it is to treat. And the reason why is because the malfunctioning grows throughout mm -hmm. the heart. And so it's on the surface, it's on the back of the heart. You know, um, the problem that you have is the longer you have it, the more difficult it is to treat. And so there's a number of different procedures and um, a number of the hospitals uh, have become AFib um, centers. And so you can treat it um, with a, with the um, uh, catheter-based ablation, or you can treat it with a newer procedure called the convergent procedure. And that's a, it's a hybrid procedure, and this is utilized more for patients that have had AFib, what they call long-standing persistent AFib. Um, Dr. Galinda has described the patient that has permanent AFib, where them and their physician have actually come to the agreement that they're going to have AFib for the rest of their life. And to me, I, I hate that term because that means that, it, it, to me, I feel like it means that they've given up and they haven't, but it's just the fact that they've tried everything, supposedly, mm -hmm. to, you know. But the convergent procedure is, is a phenomenal procedure because what it does is it utilizes what the electrophysiologist does with the catheter-based ablation, which is a minimally invasive procedure, and then a cardiothoracic surgeon like Dr. Galindez or Dr. Beyer, what they do is they make a very small incision in the um, in the upper stomach, and they will actually go under the heart and ablate the entire backside of the left atrium. And cardiothoracic surgeons for years have done the maze procedure, which what they do is they, they make a little pattern on the backside of the heart. So if you're having an open heart procedure, and you have AFib, that's how they would treat it. But the bottom line is, it just doesn't happen enough. And mm -hmm. AFib, there's a number of people that are at higher risk for AFib, because like I said, you're at higher risk for stroke. And so, one of the, so th this conversion procedure is phenomenal because it has a much higher success rate. It's got about an 80, 85% success rate. And this is for patients that are at, uh, that have had AFib longer. So, 
You don't have to have failed on a traditional catheter-based ablation, but a number of the patients have. And then they, they probably went through the shocking first, yes. then the ablation, yep. maybe failed. And, you know, we don't know exactly. the exact there cases. Are a number of different medications. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other thing is this you know, is another option. This is another option. Exactly. So the more mm -hmm. options you have, the better. And then the other thing is you know, we, the Watchman procedure. Mm -hmm. So the Watchman procedure does not treat AFib. But patients that have AFib, like I've said, they're at higher risk for stroke. So the Watchman procedure is a device. It's a minimally invasive device. There's a small part of the heart called the left atrial appendage. And basically, 80 to 90% of the strokes that patients have that have AFib, it comes from the left atrial appendage. And the reason why is the blood goes into this small, I call it like a little alcove to the heart. <laughs> the blood will go in there and pull. And then it's it just pops, hanging out there. Just hanging out there. Doesn't huh. go anywhere, just hangs out, but it eventually will come out. <laughs> and then, you know, a lot of times it dissolves or gets absorbed by the bone or muscle. But if it doesn't, they're at higher risk for stroke. So what the what the uh what the uh, structural heart cardiologist like Dr. Sannon or Dr. Manny will do is they will go in and they will deploy the, the watchman into the um left atrial appendage. And Eventually, in about 60 to 90 days, the skin will grow over that device. So they, it's called endothelialization. And it endothelializes. So basically, the skin will grow over that device, and now the blood is no longer able to go into the left atrial appendage. Unbelievable. And it takes a huge stroke risk away from the patient. And so it's just phenomenal because when you're able to offer all these different things, even if you have the ablation and you go mm -hmm. back into normal sinus rhythm or you have convergent and you go back into normal sinus rhythm, it's not a guarantee. You know, um, pa patients can redevelop AFib. And one of the most difficult things about AFib is actually diagnosing it. You know, um, because pe people will go into AFib in their sleep. I've heard some people say it's like I have a, a bird trapped in the middle of my chest fluttering. Yeah. And, and, and then but also, there's all kinds of wild symptoms. There's all of kinds of things, and some people are never symptomatic. Yeah, you may never even, you may know, you never even it. know you have it, and that can uh, make you more prone to stroke, like you exactly. said, or other issues with and, the heart. And, and then when you take it another step, people that have um, um, sleep apnea, mm -hmm. they're at higher risk for developing AFib. Yeah, because their heart rate's shooting up right. and then going down and then shooting up. That's not good for it's the not, heart. And that's not good that's for the like heart. That's like that uh, uh, sensation you get right before you, like if you ever have like uh, you wake up suddenly and it's like, <gasps> like that, yeah. that's that. That's what that is. Well, and that's the thing. But all these different things can tie in. And, you mm -hmm. know, years ago when they first came out and they started talking about sleep apnea, I was like, oh, my gosh, you got to be kidding. I didn't believe it. Yeah. And, you know, but the... That's the, I think that's the critical thing. You know, we do a number of trials, you mm -hmm. know, the research that goes on um, for these devices, for these medications and things like that. You know, I think it's it's critically important because the more that they learn and they more that, like, like years ago I learned, um, I used to be in pharmaceutical sales and I sold medications for, for high cholesterol. And one of the most important things is, you know, a lot of these diseases are diseases of inflammation. And people that have inflammatory diseases of the gums are at higher risk for developing these inflammatory heart diseases. And so, you know, a lot of these things are linked. And mm -hmm. I think the more that the patients know and the more that they're able to interact with their physicians and the more that they know about whatever issue you have, the better you're going to do. It's, just, it's absolutely great. incredible. Yeah, great. And I apologize, people, because I am no, really hyperactive. Rob, you're I bringing... know I jump around a lot. We have heart surgeons on this show all the time, interventional neurologists, brain surgeons. Yep. You're really bringing some great information. I mean, kudos to you. So Thank definitely. You, sir. Thank Let's you. talk a little bit about, because I know you know a lot about this, uh, Innovations in Cardiovascular Care Symposium. I don't know if the viewers can see that, but this is a symposium that the Tenant Florida Heart and Vascular Network does every year, normally in February. Yes. Um, it's led by Dr. Eric Lieberman. Um, he's a cardiologist that you represent the South Florida Heart Institute. He's a director of cardiology for all of South Florida for Tenant. And at the South Florida Heart Institute right there in Delray Beach, I think it's a Lake Ida Road military Via trail. Via Delray, right off. Via Delray. Right it's off near military. Lake Ida near Road. Lake Ida, yes. Yeah. Beautiful building. Beautiful Definitely building. Definitely been there. Riverstone. Practice. They do uh, general cardiology. They do interventional cardiology. Um, they've added some physicians recently like Dr. Kahan who has a... Um, 
uh, additional training. He's been on the show, and he's always welcome to yes, come back great on. great guy. Additional training and different um, forms of imaging, like I said mm -hmm. earlier. You know, the better imaging that your physician has, the better they can diagnose what the issue is, and the better they know how to treat it. So, like I said, with number of different options, you want to make sure that your physician is doing the best option for you. And so, um, and one of the other things that Dr. Kahan is very involved in is genetics. You know, not just the, mm -hmm. your genetics. So genetics plays a huge role in what's going on with me, what's going on with you. Um, from a simple standpoint, like today, um, I've had heartburn since I was in, in high school. And it runs in my family. And so knowing what your genetics are, knowing your family history is critically important. I, I never knew this until I really started working with physicians. When you go into a doctor's office, one of the most important things that they do is they find out when we, got, when we fill out all this paperwork, two of the most important things for them to realize is what your medical history is and what your family's me medical history is because of genetics. And so Dr. Kayon is very involved in genetics and he's very involved in where genetics is going. And he does a phenomenal presentation on this. And a lot of the physicians that I work with love to do community presentations. And so... Um, Excuse me, but it really makes you think with genetics testing, where mm -hmm. are we going to go with this? I mean, there is a huge, um, I, you know, I guess there's a there's a need for us to realize where genetics can go, but do we want it to go there? You know, I mean, it's 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 one of those things where it's kind of like a, it's a double-edged sword, you know, where, you know, eventually do we want to be able to pick what <laughs> our kids look like and, you know... Do we want to live to be 150 or 200 years old because of all the different genetics modifications that are potentially coming in the future? And so uh, it's just very interesting. And 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 some of the genetics testing, um, it, it's extremely interesting. But uh, you know, it's you have to be very precautionary. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. it's just one of those things when when you hear his presentation, it's it's very interesting and it's kind of scary in some ways. Yeah, but that's for heart health. So yes, yes, we're exactly. happy to have. Sorry, I got a little uh, tangential doctor, there, didn't I? Doctor K. Yeah, <laughs> heart health, genetic, um, education. But and yes, training. let's get back to the symposium because yeah. Dr. Lieberman has done a phenomenal job putting this together. I think this is like the third or fourth. This one. is the fourth one. Fourth one. Okay. Um, it, it's on um, uh, February 9th, Friday, February 9th is a reception, and then all day on Saturday, February tenth, it is it is um, designed for professionals. Mm -hmm. so, so doctors, doctors, nurses, nurse practitioners, physicians assistants, MAs, anybody that needs to earn continuing education credits or units. Um, so physicians, it's CMEs for uh, nurse practitioners or nurses. I believe it's CEUs. You can earn seven throughout the course of the day on Saturday if you you know if you participate in in the presentations that are available. And I think it's absolutely incredible because what what they're doing is they're bringing. Um, experts from around the country um, to talk about things like limb salvage. Dr. Ricotta and Dr. Marcus are going to speak about that. Did he work with Dr. Marcus in Atlanta? In Atlanta, yes. Oh, wow. Yep. Yeah, so... Not um, going to miss that one. So they're going to talk about the minimally invasive procedures. They're going to talk about um, research updates. I mean, it, it, when you look... Um, one of the most important things, I think, is... When you look at a lot of what's going on with these minimally invasive procedures, but also the, like the gold standard, like open heart and things like that, you know, it always comes down, and I've said this a couple of times, and obviously I'm not the one that came up with this, but what is appropriate for the patient? And so I think, the, like we've said, the more options that are available for the patient, the better. And so this, this event is really bringing to the forefront some of the latest technologies, some of the latest procedures, and the data that has come from a lot of these um, trials that have been going on. And what a lot of these experts, I mean, these these, these are... Thought, these are top heart, heart these are vascular national, doctors yes, in the nation. National thought leaders, some of the best physicians in the country. Um, you know, tricuspid valve is going to be one of the... You know, one of the things that I've heard is that tricuspid valve is one of the most difficult things to treat when it comes to some of these procedures for the heart. And so I just think that, um, you know, uh, it's uh, it's very interesting. And I think 
being a part of this and being able to sit through some of these presentations, you know, I know a little, I know enough to scratch the surface on some mm-hmm. of these things. But when I sit down and I hear some of these presentations, it really reminds me of what I don't know. I mean, I don't need a huge reminder, but this is very high end, um, you know, very uh, involved um, discussions that are going to go on, and 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 some of the sometimes they don't agree. You know, there's, mm-hmm. you know, there's still... There's debate. There's debate. Yeah, definitely. I've seen it before. Yeah. So this is this uh, Innovations in Cardiovascular Care Symposium on, yes. on February 10th yes. at um, Marriott Harbor Beach Resort and Spa in Fort Lauderdale yes. is open to students, nurses and allied, administrators and physicians. And yes. if anyone has any questions, they can uh, call Alexandra Posada at 954 954- Two three five six two four six, or go to thvnsymposium.com. So thvn and then the word symposium.com, and they can find out some info there as well. It looks like uh, lunch will be served. It goes from, well, 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. It's, it's um, for seven presentations and a research update, uh, I think by uh, eight total of the nation's top vascular and heart um doctors yes. so breakfast, that's breakfast and lunch sir breakfast and lunch yep. okay it's, uh, the the fee is 150 dollars for physicians uh 65 dollars uh for nurses nurse practitioners physicians assistants um administrators, and, administrators as well 65 dollars and 25 dollars for students so so those are students in nursing or nursing or, uh, uh, you know medical school. medical students I mean, the most important thing i think i mean and this is for the general mm-hmm population as well, although I think most people it might be a little bit much, um, might be a little bit over their head um, because it is extremely clinical. But I think that this is something that they've put together for physicians here in South Florida and around the country. And to, to, to hear these, you know, the quality of physicians that are going to be speaking at this event and what they're going to talk about um, is absolutely incredible. I mean, PFO closure, you know, basically they're going to discuss holes in the heart, and and the the um, uh, some of the procedures that are available, and probably some of the data that they've been able to show, um, how if someone has a hole in their heart between the, the septum, um, you know they're at higher risk for stroke. And so I just think that you know knowledge is power. I know I've said it, and I apologize for repeating myself, but I, I no, can't I say was... it enough. I mean, the more we know about ourselves and whatever issues we have going on, the better we're going to do. And think about it: the unknown is scary. Mm-hmm. And so the more we educate ourselves and the more we, we realize what what issues we face and and how to deal with it, the better we're going to do. Mm-hmm. I, I, that's just the way I look at it. You know, well, that's perfect. It's all about peace of mind. My, my dad's always told me you cannot yeah. put a price tag on peace of mind. Well, I'll tell you one thing. You can talk. You really need, <laughs> you really need your own show here <laughs> on the network. I, I, uh, I know. I'm a, I'm a talker. <laughs> but listen, thank you so much for bringing so much great information, really. I'm honestly saying that. It's my um, pleasure. We'd Thank love you for to having have you on again you. on the You and Your Doctor show, Thank living a longer much. and healthier life. Thank you for letting us share with you a longer and healthier lifestyle. If you have a doctor or are a doctor and wish to be on the show, call Amp2TV at 866 244 5422. And we will put you on the air as soon as possible. Tune in next week for more information on living longer and having a healthier life. The opinions expressed on the preceding sponsored program were strictly those of its hosts, guests, and callers, and not necessarily those of the station, its staff, management, or sponsors.